How's it going everyone? In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at everything you cannot get in Super Flat Survival. I made some helpful images for people to save, so be sure to check the description so you can download them for your personal reference. And before we get started, make your sacrifice to the algorithm gods and hit that like button for me. So, starting off, we have the unobtainable mobs, and I've gone ahead and sorted them into passive, neutral, and hostile. There's also a section for the extinct mobs, which are mobs that were once available on Super Flat but are no longer available. Uh, and by the way, I'm only counting things that were available in full release versions, no weird snapshot exploits. Now, first off, you'll notice that the glow squid is not on the list of extinct mobs. In my last video, I said they were being removed in 1.18.2, but thankfully, it turns out I was wrong. Mojang simply adjusted the spawning conditions so that they only spawn at light level zero. So luckily, we'll have glowing sacks for the foreseeable future. But that's a great example that I do get things wrong from time to time, so if there's anything wrong or missing from these guides, please just let me know in the comments and I'll get it corrected. Anyways, the other three extinct mobs on this list were not as lucky as the glow squid. Each one of these was tragically removed from the plains biome, which makes them no longer accessible. But if you start back far enough, you could definitely get a few rabbits and axolotls to breed, and you could name tag a few squid, so they're all technically gettable. Now sadly, the rest of the mobs in this image you're never gonna see in super flat, but luckily in the second half of this video, I'm going to go over some ideas we came up with for how Mojang could make them accessible, so stay tuned for that. But just to list them off real quick, you can't get the mushrooms, ocelot, parrot, salmon, snow golems, fox, turtles, polar bears, panda bears, goats, wolves, dolphins, guardians, elder guardians, and then husks and strays. And you'll notice I do have two little asterisks here at the bottom. The only type of llamas you can get are the trader llamas, and you also would need to create a world in 1.17 and then upgrade to 1.18.2 in order to get the mine shafts which have the cave spider spawners. So moving on to our next image, I've laid out every single block you can't get in the game as of 1.18.2, and the biggest sections you're gonna notice are the Deep Slate family, the Prismarine family, and ore blocks. Other notable things are the coral and coral fans, the two tall flowers, and there's a few other oddball things on here. You've got snow, snow layers, ice, powder snow, mycelium and tuff, bamboo, which gives you scaffolding, sponges, conduits, we've got the dead bush, turtle eggs, berry bush, cocoa bean, glow lichen, spore blossom, and then some of those new blocks uh, from the geodes, the amethyst, the budding amethyst, and then the tinted glass and the calcite. And last but not least, you can't get skeleton, zombie, or spider spawners, as far as we know. We've got the list of items you can't get. Now, uh, you'll notice the extinct ones uh, just come from the axolotls and the rabbits, which were removed. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, you know, because there's no turtles, you can't get the scoots or the turtle shell. Because there's no berry bush, you can't get the berries. And you get the picture. By the way, that potion down there is the potion of the turtle master. As, as far as I know, you can't get it. But I do believe you can get the tipped arrow from the Fletcher. But guys, believe it or not, that's it. That is everything you can't get in Super Flat. It's actually a pretty small list. The list used to be so much bigger. So I'm very grateful that all of these things have been uh, made available over the years. Now guys, before we move on to my ideas for how Mojang could add all of this stuff, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our Minecraft server and our Discord server. I could not have done this video without the help of the smart people in our community. If you're looking to play Survival Superflat with others, we've got a public server at mogswamp.apexmc.co. Links to the Discord and the server IP are both in the description. And I wanted to take a second to thank my partner Apex Hosting for teaming up with me on the server. If you guys ever need to host a Minecraft server, I cannot recommend them enough. They have a crazy good online support team that really know Minecraft and they were able to answer some insanely specific questions I had. I gotta say, it was pretty surreal chatting with a support agent who knew everything I was talking about when I was mentioning specific things about Minecraft. They're really awesome, really reliable, and it, it makes it so easy to update your server and all of the mods on it every time Mojang releases a new version. But guys, I have an affiliate link down in the description. If you're interested in hosting a server and you're looking for a way to support my channel, please go check it out. It's a really awesome way you can support me. 
Now, let's move on to some ideas for how Mojang could add everything, starting with the blocks. Now, Deep Slate is something I was really sad we didn't get on Superflat because it's basically a builder's dream. So I got this comment that said, uh, you could just make stone generators create Deep Slate below Y equals zero, which makes so much sense because stone below Y equals zero is Deep Slate, right? Mojang, definitely implement this one, it's genius. And next up, we have all of the ores. So uh, the idea for this one is really simple, just make all of the Deep Slate and stone ore variants part of the loot table for mineshaft chests. Now that there's a way to get mineshafts generating in super flat worlds, this would be probably the most logical way to make ores available. They would be insanely rare because you'd have to do a ton of exploring to even find any. Now next up we have snow and powder snow as well as ice. This one's pretty easy to solve. Just make it so that above Y256, it snows on a plains biome. This would also allow water to freeze and turn into ice. Next up, we have mycelium. My idea for this one's really simple. Just make it spread from underneath giant mushrooms the same way that pods all spreads underneath giant spruce trees. Even if it didn't make a big patch and just the one block below where you planted the mushroom was converted to mycelium, that would be enough. Now the next one is tough. This one I think should just be made craftable. The reason being, it's basically a replacement for andesite, granite, and diorite, except below Y16. And those blocks are all craftable. If you really didn't wanna add a crafting recipe for tough, you could also just give it to the stonemason. Next up is bamboo, which would also let you craft scaffolding. This one I think belongs in the fishing treasure loot table. It already is in there, but only if you're in a jungle biome. Part of my rationale behind this is that you can also find bamboo in shipwreck loot. So clearly it's just in the ocean floating around. Let's just make it so that you can get bamboo whether or not you're in a jungle biome from fishing. All right, let's go over ideas for all these random blocks in the middle, starting off with the dead bush. I've got two ideas for this one. One idea is that you could just place down an azalea bush, shear it with shears, and it would give you azalea leaves and leave behind a dead bush. If you did it to the flowering azalea, you'd get the flowering leaves. Another idea is maybe if you try to plant any sapling on sand, it dries out and turns into a dead bush. I think either one of these things could work and would be a little fun, interesting mechanic to add to the game. For turtle eggs, this is another one that could be a rare fishing treasure. Another idea is uh, Piglin love to stomp turtle eggs, so maybe you could find it as rare chest loot in a bastion. Maybe they stole some of the turtle eggs and brought them back to their base. For sweet berries, my idea would be to just add it to the hero of the village loot table for butchers. Pretty sure a master level butcher already buys sweet berries, so it would make sense if they give them as part of the Hero of the Village effect. For cocoa beans, I feel like you could just make it so that small jungle trees grown with bone meal have a chance to give you a cocoa bean, kind of like how the beehive mechanic works. They also used to be part of the dungeon loot chests, so you could just bring that back and then also add them to mine shaft chests. For glow lichen, I think a fun little mechanic would be to right click a glow ink sac on normal vines to convert it to glow lichen, or you could do it as a crafting recipe if that's less weird. For spore blossoms, I think there's a few ideas you could just make them craftable. You could give it to the wandering trader. He already has a lot of flower trades. The only fun idea I came up with for the spore blossom is perhaps uh, you could make it so that four azalea bushes planted in a square make a giant azalea tree, kind of like the mechanic for spruce saplings or jungle saplings. For the two block tall flowers, I think the thing that makes the most sense is to just give it to the wandering trader. He already trades for every other flower in the game. Alternatively, you could introduce a new like nature or florist type villager. The beehive could be uh, their workstation and they could just trade for all sorts of flowers and natural things. I didn't really come up with an idea for how to implement the spawners other than maybe just adding in dungeon structures to the flat world. But the structures we do have on super flat uh, definitely weren't intentional other than villages. So I don't know if Mojang would ever do this. Is it Mojang or Mojang? I used to say Mojang, I started saying Mojang, now I just flip flop back and forth. Anyways guys, for coral fans and coral, I think this one's pretty simple. Just make it so you can bone meal coral blocks and these have a chance to grow. I'm pretty sure it already kind of works like that in warm ocean biomes, so just take away the biome requirement and make it work like that everywhere. 
I really wish we had the coral fans because they're so good for decorating. So Mojang, please get on this one. Now maybe you noticed I've been avoiding a few of these and that's because these next couple ideas are a bit more of a stretch than the other ones. You see, amethysts are kind of a challenge to incorporate because it's clear that when Mojang introduced them, they wanted it to be so that you had to search them out. I think they've intentionally made it so that if you want to build an amethyst farm, you have to do it wherever you found the geode. And so the only way that I could think to make that work for a super flat world is to add geo generation to the end. If geodes generated within end islands, I think it would make a lot of sense. They sort of fit the magic purpley theme of the end. Being able to go explore end islands in order to find geodes would add a new purpose to the end, which I think it really needs. This would also let you get the calcite because the calcite generates as part of the geode. But if you guys have a better idea for this one that doesn't break the game, let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to hear. And finally, we have all the prismarine blocks as well as sponge and conduit. These were tricky as well because again, it's things that Mojang clearly wants you to have to go out exploring in order to get. So this one's definitely the biggest stretch of all, but as I was saying, the end could definitely use an update. We've got biomes in the nether, we've got biomes for caves now. Why not give the end dimension its own biomes as well? Some end islands could generate with like big purple water pools and you could add a new mob called the end guardian, which would basically just be a purple version of the guardian. This would let you get prismarine crystals and shards. And then in order to get the Elder Guardian, which drops Sponge, make him into a triggerable boss, kind of like the Wither. And this also ties into my idea for how to get the Heart of the Sea, which lets you get a conduit. That could be a drop from the Elder Guardian, but only when you spawn him in. Kind of like a Wither drops a Wither Star. It was really the only thing I could come up with that still has like an exploration aspect to it. But again, if you guys have better ideas for this one, please let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear. You'll see that all the ideas we just laid out pretty much cover everything on here. One thing it doesn't cover is the Explorer maps, but those just show up blank anyways if the structures don't exist. The only other thing it doesn't cover is the Trident. The reason you can't get Trident is because converting zombies into Drowned never spawns a Drowned with an actual Trident. Those have to be natural spawned Drowns, and Drowns only spawn in water biomes. So all you really need to do to make Tridents available is to just make it so that converted drowns have a very small chance of spawning in with a trident. Now, I just want to make it clear, at the end of the day, I don't expect Mojang to add all of these. I think part of the challenge and the fun of Superflat is these limitations on some of the items that you can get. But one of the things you guys asked me a lot was what is the thing I want most that I currently cannot get? It's basically impossible for me to pick one, so I'll just list off a few. Dark Prismarine and Sea Lanterns are just Oh, they're so beautiful. Coral fans are incredible for decorating. And bamboo, not only for terraforming, but also for the scaffolding would be, it would just be so nice. And yeah, I don't want to get greedy here, but Deep Slate would be amazing. Now, we didn't go over the ideas for how to get all the different mobs into Super Flat, but this video is getting a little long, so I think I'm gonna save it for the next one. Make sure to stay tuned, because some of the ideas I have for you guys are pretty fun. But that's it for this one, guys. If you like the video, make sure to leave that like. I can't wait to hear your suggestions in the comments, and I'll see you all next time. Yeah.